All right, first and foremost, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahashum Wawrikakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him endearing and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. All right. So in this ministry, you have to be aware of men who constantly focus on the negatives. Men who constantly try to put more hell on you, okay? You have to keep an open mind. You have to know being in this truth, afflictions come. Chastenings come. We understand some of us have to be martyrs. Now, knowing these things, you have certain men. They talk about certain things just to plant that evil seed into your mind. That evil seed of doubt. That evil seed of you pondering on whether or not you're going to have to face death for this ministry, okay? Man don't control life or death. We don't control life or death. We don't control our future. But you have to be aware of men in this ministry who try to pump, outside of pumping the fear of the Lord into you, they try to pump the fear of this world into you. They try to pump the fear of death itself or put it in your mind that it's certain that you have to taste death. Okay. So let's go to the book of Job chapter 16 and verse one. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comfort comforters are ye all. So in this truth, in times that you may be down and out, you may have brothers, instead of encouraging you, they're giving you words of doubt, words of discouragement. When Job was catching hell, his friends around him thought he was catching hell because of his sins. When in reality, he was catching hell through a test. It was all a test through a friendly conversation between the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and Satan, okay? And it was a friendly conversation. It wasn't an argument. There wasn't no disagreement. It was a friendly bet. And through that bet, Job went through various afflictions. And then when he went to his friends for comfort, they basically added more hell to Job. Okay, basically telling Job, get over it. You know, it's the it's the judgment of the Lord. You know what you're going to do about it. And that wasn't even the case. You have men in this truth. They try to put it in your mind like you're going to be a martyr. They put it in your mind like being in this ministry. You only catch hell. You know, if you get blessed in a situation, you have men who will try to guilt you for that. If you're diligent in this ministry, you have men who will try to guilt you for that. And then plant seeds in other people's minds like, yeah, there's no way this guy's a man of the Lord. This guy ain't catching enough hell or or this guy, he, he's too on fire. Right. Or this guy thinks he knows this or he knows that you always have men trying to place doubt into other people's minds because they themselves really don't believe. You have a lot of miserable comforters into this in, in, in this knowledge. OK, so be aware of that. Now, me, I don't consider myself the best speaker. I'm just a normal guy. And through the Lord dealing with me shows me how humble the Lord is because he literally took a normal guy and gave gave him the truth. All right. But seeing that I'm a normal guy with this truth, part of my job is to give you brothers hope and you sisters to put hope in y'all's heart, man, because you have a lot of men in Israel trying to sow doubt in other men, trying to get other men to hate on other men because of their works being righteous and their works being wicked. Okay. You have a lot of 
jealous Israelites. You have a lot of snaky, uh, deceptive, you know, two-faced, double-tongued, slandering Israelites. And then when they make videos through the spirit, it's like you can tell they're talking about certain brothers, but they don't want to put it out there. Okay. There's a lot of men trying to sow doubt in brothers and brothers have to be aware of men who are trying to put that seed of doubt in your mind. Okay. Trying to play on your flesh. So let's go to the book of second Ezra chapter 14. In verse 14, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. So put off that weak nature, always thinking on whether or not you're going to be a martyr, thinking on what if when I go out and teach, I get arrested. What if when I go out and teach, somebody come and beat my ass, right? What if, what if, what if, what if some, some random dude just drives by and, and hops out the car, you know what I mean? You know, your, your, your flesh will have you thinking all sorts of, 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 of weird stuff, man. And then you have men in this ministry helping those, those thoughts within your mind. In this ministry, we have to put our confidence in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Because a part of the job of this world is to put that spirit of unbelief inside of you. Because you have men who can play the part of a man of the Lord. But their whole time in this ministry, they're jealous of this man over here. They're jealous of that man over here. They don't think he's a man of the Lord. They looking down on brothers like brothers ain't nothing. When in reality, it's the opposite. Okay. Be careful of men trying to place the fear of this world in your heart and not the fear of the Lord. Whether it comes to us being killed or, or martyred for this ministry, that's up to the Lord. It's already wrote. OK, but there's no need to ponder on that because what's already written is already written. All we can do is hope that the Lord deliver us out of what's to come. That's a part of us being in this ministry is to have that hope, that desire to want to be saved. Saved from what? Overall, death. Being tortured, the things that are coming to this world, we want to be saved from that. OK. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Mortal thoughts are an innumerable amount of things. How am I going to pay this bill? My car just broke down. What am I going to do now? Dang, I just lost my job. What am I going to do now? Dang, the world hate me. You know, it, it feels weird. What am I going to do now? Right? I, I'm, I'm not a very great, I'm not, a, I'm not a very good speaker. You know, why should I teach? I don't get a lot of views. I'm not, I'm not doing numbers. There's no effect from my teachings, right? All of these are mortal thoughts that we have to sway away from. And this world tries to put those thoughts upon us. And it's our job to shake that off, man. And we shake it off through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? And if it gets too bad, prayer and fasting. Okay? Cast away the burdens of man. You know, is my woman committing adultery on me to the point now you, you, you spying on her? You putting GPS tracking devices on her car, right? Are our brothers in this ministry really my brother to where now you ain't being brotherly because you looking at men in this ministry like you look at men in the world, right? Am I really a man of the Lord? What if I'm not a man of the Lord? That's just weak, man. That's a mortal thought. Okay, and this flesh is weak. And Yahweh Shai warned us that this flesh is weak. This flesh's job is to wrestle with your spirit. Because think about it. In order for us to receive the kingdom, this flesh has to die. Imagine having the mind of your flesh. Your flesh's duty is like, no, I don't want to die. I want to stay here. <laughs> right? And that also comes with the desires of this world. But the spirit's like, nah, <laughs> you got to die. So I can get the hell up out of here and get a better body so I can get a better living. But the flesh is like, nah, I don't want to die. You stay in here. Look at that fine ass woman. Yeah, she got a man, but she looking at you. 
Look at that guy over there. You see how he's living? You can be living like that, right? You turn on uh, the internet. You got guys getting rich over nothing. And your flesh will tell you, see, you could be doing that, right? Whether or not you're having these thoughts, these are just examples of how the flesh works, okay? And the Lord is so cold because he controls our thoughts. You might, you might feel a certain way one day, go to sleep, wake up, and you just have a demonic thought on your mind. You thinking about an ex, but she got a whole dude, man. She married to another man. But for some reason, your mind is pondering on her, right? So now your flesh is being burdened by this desire of going back to a woman that is not only polluted, she's dealing with another man now. So now it, it will be adultery, right? And it's like, why am I thinking this? So it's your job to rebuke that thought because your flesh is going to try to reel you in to that, that burden, that desire. Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. And guess what one of our biggest weaknesses are? Women. We love women. A woman's the weaker vessel. A lot of men have fell out over women. A lot of men have been fake brothers because of women. You have men who have stepped over brothers to try to get to their wife. You've had men who've dogged out their brothers because some woman's around. You have men who left the truth because their woman gave them an ultimatum. Okay? So we have to be aware of that weak nature that comes with this flesh. And women being one of the biggest weaknesses of man, seeing that the woman is our glory. Let's not pretend here. Okay? And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. So whatever thought is on your mind that's the most heaviest unto thee, you got to cast that to the side because that's some bullshit. You pondering on things that you have no control of. Everything is the Lord's will. Yahweh by Shemi Shai controls everything. And you have people setting their desires in this world so much that now you're putting your faith in your flesh. You're making flesh your arm. And you're not trusting in Yahweh by Shemi Shai. You think that's going to go well with you? Of course not. Let's go to Hebrews 2. Another weakness that comes with this flesh is the fear of death, pondering on what, what if you have to die, right? What if, what if, what if, what if this happens? What if that happens? Okay. Yeah, it's possible, but we should be pondering on being delivered, especially this go round. Let's go to Hebrews chapter two. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you know that having a fear of death is bondage? Whether it be literal death, whether it be putting your fear in Esau, that's bondage, man. But see, one thing about this ministry is it sets you free. It takes you away from the fear of death. There's going to be moments where you ponder what if, yeah, it could happen. But you have to remember, you have to consider with all the men in the scriptures who were martyred, Somehow, some way, the spirit was upon them to take it. It's even written that when the apostle Peter got martyred, that he was crucified upside down. But the reason he was crucified upside down is because he asked for that. Because he felt like he wasn't worthy to be crucified the same as Yahweh shy. Now, as a mortal man, you would say, dang, you know. That's kind of extreme, right? In that moment of someone having to go through that, if the Lord is with you, he's going to make you bold. So even then, what is there to be worried about? Okay. 
your, your flesh is weak. But the Lord's men, if they have to be martyrs, there is a certain spirit that the Lord puts on them that overtakes their flesh. But our hope is to not have to taste death. And to fear death is bondage, man. And Yahweh Shai defeated death. So through Yahweh Shai, we got immortality coming, man. You know? Just like me doing that just now, kind of hurt my knuckles, man. You know, I got my, my ring hitting against my hand. I hurt my knuckle. That's the flesh. The flesh is weak. You know, we're not like tough guys. We're not bullies. We're fullies, man. We're just normal men. We go to work. We teach the words of the Lord. We fully believe it. And we, we try to hammer it in y'all's head. Like, look, man. We praise the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai is that guy. He is that man. And a, and a lot of men are belittling Yahweh Shai because they'll call on his name, but they're not being brotherly. They're, they're, they're sowing seeds of doubt in the minds of men. Having men pondering on, dang, what, what if I have to die? Dang, you know, what, what hell am I going to catch tomorrow? I'm catching hell right now. What am I going to go through tomorrow? Because men will bring out videos on chastisement, affliction. But what about the videos on, on how great the Lord is and how, how good he is to us and all the times he's gotten us through things, okay? Or giving examples of times that he's gotten you through things. But yet you have men talking about, yeah, Esau want to kill us. You know, some of us got to die. But then there's no balance to that for certain men. And I'm just speaking in the spirit. Even with saying that, I can't really ponder on who particular I'm thinking of because I would say it. I have no problem saying it. I don't mind being disliked in this ministry. That, that doesn't bother me. I'm not here to be liked, but nevertheless, for you true, sincere brothers, I love you brothers, man. Okay, if I don't know you, I, I don't give a shit. I love you brothers, man. Y'all are my brothers because you serve Yahweh Shad. Okay? Don't let men place that seed of doubt in your mind. Don't let that seed of doubt come into your mind. Like, how, how can this brother love me? He don't even know me. The spirit of Yahweh Shai allows me to love you because you are my brethren and you sisters out there. OK, who, who, who believe this ministry? I love y'all. Now, what does that mean? If it came down right and I totally knew that you were immersed in this truth, you were a believer. If it came down, yes, I would lay down my life for you. Don't even need to know you. Why? Because it's for Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai did it. If Yahweh Shai is willing to die for you, why wouldn't I? But I would rather live, man. So even with saying I, 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 I'm, I'm down to die, I would rather live. That's how we should be thinking. We want to live for this truth. Yes, yeah, some of us may have to be martyrs, but we want to live for this. We're hoping to be delivered from death. And to even be scared of death in the first place is bondage. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll read this again in Hebrews 2 and 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So Yahweh Shai came in the flesh just like we are. He walked amongst us, man. Okay, he wasn't just some invincible spirit who didn't have a race or a nationality. He came as an Israelite. And if he walked the earth today, you would look at him as a so-called Negro. You would look at him as an average guy. But if he was to return as how he's going to return, yeah, you're going to be in fear. You're going to submit because he's not returning as a normal man. OK, he's returning as a conquering lion. He's returning as as someone who's who's ready for war, who's ready for vengeance. OK, as a as a uh, supernatural being, a celestial being. OK. But when he when he came, he walked amongst us in the flesh and just as um, he was risen from the dead and now he has that that new immortal body, we're going to be given the same by being joint heirs with our Lord. Believe it or not, I do. Okay. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, 
he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So being subject to bondage means you 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 are you are you are afraid of death. Now that makes me think of the book of John. Now with John, you have John, then you have first John, then you have uh second John. So I'm going to John chapter eight and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So knowing this truth, it makes you free. Part of being in bondage is, is fearing death. And there are men in this ministry who are great teachers but subliminally, they're sowing seeds of doubt. And you might not pick up on it, but, you know, if you're paying attention, if you're seizing, you're, you're catching the, the bullshit. We have to believe that we're going to be delivered. You know, certain men, I'll hear them say, and, and brothers got to do better at this. Like, you know, I ain't shit. You know, we ain't nothing. Yahweh Shai didn't die for a bunch of ain't shits. Okay? That would be crazy. That, that would be like saying he died in vain. He died for nothing. He died particularly for men and women, for Israelites who he deemed as special. Through a, a uh, conversation that he had with the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai had that conversation. That they both loved us so much that they would have to send him to be that ultimate sacrifice to redeem us. So to say we're not shit, you know, that's also placing that seed of doubt and brothers have to do better with also pondering on if you're doing this work in truth and sincerity, believe that you are a man of the Lord. Okay. Now it's one thing to say, yeah, I'm the elect. I know I'm the elect. That's not what I'm saying. But you need to believe that you are a man of the Lord. You need to have hope in that just as you hope, right, that America is going to be destroyed two years ago. Right. So this truth sets us free from that fear of death that this world tries to place upon us. OK. So now that we're set free through this truth. This is Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight and verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Abba. So we don't have the spirit of bondage. We've been set free through this truth. Since we have the truth, we understand Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai controls life and death, not Esau, not what some brother wishes on you. OK, not because some man tries to make you feel like you're not a man of the Lord or there's a smear campaign on your name. So now you're 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 feeling that spirit of doubt come upon you. The scriptures told us we're going to be hated. So that just comes with being in this ministry. If you're being hated and you know you're not doing nothing wrong to people, don't doubt. Now, if you out here being a niggard. You out here being a straight nigga, okay? You living like an Edomite. You have the caucasity to come into this ministry and think that you can do what thy will, like Aleister Crowley. And then uh, when things start to happen, you, you acting like, you know, it's the Lord's fault, okay? Anyway, I'm kind of getting off topic. We don't have the spirit of fear. We've been set free through this ministry. To where although we could still get hurt, although, yeah, we could still die, typically, of course. But we don't put our fear in that, seeing that it's not even up to us whether we live or die. There's some of us here right now that's not even going to die. You know that? Okay. Matter of fact. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. I'm going to just keep it real. 
This is one of my favorite scriptures. This is the book of Mark. And this is the type of things I like to hope in. This is the book of Mark chapter nine and verse one. And he said unto them, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking to his disciples. Okay. And he said unto them, verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of the power come with the power. So Yahweh Shai told the disciples there would be some of them that, that stand there that wouldn't taste death till he returned. Well, guess what? All of them at that time particularly died. All of them were martyred except for John the Revelator. John the Revelator lived to be of old age. And the reason why he got to live to be of old age, well, it was told to him, okay, that he may not have to die. And Peter kind of got offended. Matter of fact, I'm going to go into that too. Because see, this is another thing. You have men, they try to basically become nosy somewhat and, and place their business where it don't belong. Okay? Now, although amongst the 12, those men walk together, but the Lord was still dealing with each man individually. Now, Peter was the head of the church. Peter was also a martyr. John, um, matter of fact, let me just go to the scriptures, man. Let's just uh, stay on track. Matter of fact, before I go there, before I go there, my mind's racing, you know, th this lesson I'm not trying to lose you, so stay with me. All right. But let's go to second Ezra. There's some of us here right now that's not going to taste death. Don't let men place the seed of doubt in your mind to where you're just constantly thinking about, dang, you know, Esau got some toys, man. You know, how am I going to survive that? How am I going to survive this? Right. So let's go to second Ezra. Chapter six. In verse 25, whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my vow. <laughs> Tongue twister, excuse me. Second Ezra 6 and 25, whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of the world. And the men that are received shall see it. Who have not tasted death from their birth. So there are men here right now. Who are not going to taste death ever again. They are going to live to see the return of Yahweh Shai. And literally be delivered up into the air. That's amazing man. So keep that in mind. Yeah some of us have to be martyrs. And John the Revelator saw that in a vision. But instead of pondering on that. Ponder on this. Ponder on the fact that there's going to be some of us that don't have to taste death. And again, even with some of us who may have to be martyred, the Lord's going to give us that spirit of boldness anyway. We might not understand it right now because we're not faced with that particular situation at the moment. Right. If it happens. But if that ever happens, the Lord never leaves his men naked. Just like when Stephen got stoned, he saw Yahweh Shai standing at the right hand of him. Yahweh Shai wasn't sitting at the right hand. He was standing at the right hand, showing you Yahweh Shai was observing and watched him stand stiffly for this gospel. And Yahweh Shai stood for him. Like, I see you. I see what you're doing for me. And seeing that Stephen was about to get stoned, he didn't say, no, please don't stone me. He said, I see the, the, the son of the heavenly father on the right hand. That was a comforting situation, man. Why? Because the Lord always gives gives his men the spirit to taste death. Way more comforting than someone in the world. OK, but we're focusing on being delivered. We're focusing on not tasting death because, see, there's some of us here who will not taste death. That was promised to us. What about that? OK. Second Ezra six and 26 again. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. For evil shall be put out and deceit 
shall be quenched. And that's what we're coming into. OK, we're coming into a, a great change in the world so great that even we are going to be changed. Our bodies are going to be changed. So there are some of us here right now that are not going to taste death. Now let's go to first Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So there are those who are going to be alive when Yahweh Shai returns, right? But that's not going to cause them to be on a chariot before those who have already been martyred. So seeing that although there are particular men and women even who are going to be martyrs for this ministry. They're going to be on a chariot first anyway, and the Lord is going to comfort them in that that trial, that hour, because why they're of his. But the majority of us are not going to have to go through that. So these are the type of things we need to focus on. I may not even have to taste death ever again. You know, when you're going throughout your day, just ponder on like, what if I never have to die again? OK, because when Yahweh Shai told that to the 12. Um, you got to think they might have been confused because that was referencing them coming back in the reincarnation and being here to see the return of the Lord. Right. So, you know, the majority of the 12 are here right now, if not all of them. OK. Let's see. OK, so, yeah, so going into what I was saying earlier, right. With uh, what Yahweh Shai had told Peter. Um, what is that? OK, let's go to John. Let's go to John. Chapter 21 and verse 18. Because you have a lot of men, again, they try to place that seed of doubt or they, they, they try to make their business in places that really don't belong. Like you have men, they might tell one man who's actually a man of the Lord, the, the Lord is going to put you to death or you're going to end up falling out. They'll say all these things, right, and try to place this seed of doubt in his mind. But that, that's not up to you to decide. Just like rather or not, a man is going to be a martyr like, oh, you know, th this man is so bold. He's going to end up getting killed for that. He's going to end up dying. That's not for you to really say it's the Lord's will. It's the Lord's will if we die or not. OK, so John 21 and 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, this is Yahweh Shai speaking to Peter. OK, verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young. Thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So this was speaking how Peter was going to be a martyr for Yahweh Shai. OK, how did Peter how, how did Peter uh, become a martyr? He was crucified. OK. Th this is what they're saying. Now, it's not written in the scriptures that that Peter was crucified upside down, but that's what records are showing. OK, and that's why a lot of Satanists, they believe in the upside down cross because it's mockery of Peter, who is the head of the church. OK. OK, verse 19, this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify the power. So even if some of us have to be martyrs. It's to glorify Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It's not a shameful thing. It might seem shameful to those who, who see it on the sideline if they have to see it. But for those individuals who may have to be martyred, man, that's glorious. Okay. And take away Judas Iscariot, 
because he hung himself, right? And then John the Revelator, he lived up until old age. All the disciples were martyred. But it's not going to be like that this time around. Okay? Not this time. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple who Yahweh Shai loved, speaking of John the Revelator, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Yahweh Shai, Lord, and what shall this man do? Yahweh Shai saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So Peter, after hearing how he was going to be a martyr, he, he was basically looking at John like, so, so if I'm going to be a martyr, what about him? Right? So here it is. Although Peter being a man of the Lord, he's the head of the church. He's kind of worrying about affairs that don't, that don't even concern him. You have men in this truth. They're trying to worry about affairs that don't necessarily concern them, right? Like they'll be watching a video and they'll be like, dang, you know, Esau going to end up beating this dude's ass. This dude think <laughs> this dude really believes in that Bible. You know, what if the Illuminati come and grab him up? What if, you know, they, they'll, they'll get to think of some crazy shit, right? But what is that to you? You don't know if we're going to live or die. Some of us ain't going to taste death, right? So this is Peter, you know, being in the flesh. Peter wasn't being wicked. But, you know, I think a lot of us in Peter's place probably would have felt like that. Like, you know, well, OK, you're telling me I'm at to be a martyr. What about what about him? What about John? Right. Let's read this again. Uh, John 21 and 20. Then Peter turned about, seeth the disciple whom Yahweh Shai loved. Speaking of John, the revelator. OK. Following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeth him, say to Yahweh Shai, Lord, and what shall this man do? Right. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So Yahweh Shai told Peter, what is it to thee if John is still alive when I come back? Right? So here it is. We're in the time of Yahweh Shai's return. What is it to you if this brother ain't a martyr? This brother may not have to taste death. You have men talking about, yeah, you know, uh, Esau going to grab hold of a lot of us. Some of us going to have to. Yeah, that's true. But you're, you're missing out the other side. Some of us ain't going to taste death. Really, a lot of us ain't going to taste death. Okay? So again, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, if, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die, speaking of John the Revelator, which is also why John was able to live into old age and he had those revelations right while you know working in the salt mines in the isle of patmos okay where was i at okay verse 23 right then went this saying abroad among the brethren so this is them whispering about john right because, see, just because, you know, these men walked amongst Yahweh Shai doesn't mean they were perfect. We're men in the flesh. We have our disagreements. We have our, you know, our, our personalities, so to speak. Anyway, then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple, speaking of John, should not die. Yet Yahweh Shai said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So Yahweh Shai is like, okay, what if he don't die? What if, why is that your business? Okay? And then you have men in this ministry trying to put this seed in the air like, like men are just going to die. Like, like, what is that to you? You don't know. Okay? Anyway, this is the disciple 
which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Yahweh did, the which, if they should be written, everyone I suppose, that even the world itself could not be contained, could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So, you know, some of us ain't going to taste death, man. It's already written. And you have men trying to, you know, place that, that wicked spirit in the air. Like, yeah, we all just going to die. Esau going to grab a hold of us. Ain't no hope. And Jacob's trouble is just over, right? Then you have others talking about, you know, we're going to be delivered before Jacob's trouble happens, you know, when it when it's really here at its fullness. You know, long story short, just be be aware of that seed of doubt. Be aware of that that mentality of just thinking about dying, you kicking back, you know, drinking some yayan or something or, you know, whatever you're doing and you just thinking like, damn, man, you know, what if Esau does such and such and you know what if what if i get caught slipping one day and esau such and such what if, what if he john todd's me man you know you're over here bugging out because you're not putting your fear in your how about show me i was shy you putting your fear in your flesh you putting your fear in this world you letting that seed of doubt discourage you okay so let's end it with this here this is longer than what i wanted it to be to be honest first peter's three and seventeen for it is better if the will of the power be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. So it's up to the Lord whether we have to suffer. It's up to the Lord why we suffer. OK, but we shouldn't put our mind just on suffering and on heavy things and and, and, and feeling like there's just no hope. You know, the Lord just gives me hell, man. That's it, man. You know, but you don't ponder on all the great things the Lord's done to us, man. Done for us. OK, you know, there's there's been miracles in my life, man. I, I can't pay the Lord back outside of just doing what he asked me to do. The best the best thing that we can do to a power that runs everything and that owns everything is just be obedient. That's all we can. That's all we can offer. OK. So be, be aware of these these men who are trying to sow seeds of doubt into your mind. These men who who come off like they're men of the Lord, but they're trying to plant seeds in your mind on other men or plant seeds in, in other men's mind like the Lord might kill them because of this and that. And they're not doing anything wrong, man. It's not up to them. It's not up to us if we got to taste death or not. There's men here right now on this earth right now in this generation. They never going to die again. OK, period. I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Wawrakakwadash. Until my next lesson, Lord willing, Shalom, I'm out.